so uh yeah uh we uh are very happy uh thank you for inviting us to this clarin cafe um i will jump right in and i will uh, tell you first about a national initiative that text plus is actually a part of uh, which goes under an acronym uh, nfdi which stands for national research data infrastructure uh, this is uh, germany's answer uh, to uh, trying to um, make research infrastructures uh, more sustainable and develop a long-term uh, structure, also funding scheme, uh, which in Germany is always uh, somewhat tricky because of the federal nature uh, of the country. Uh, so this is a joint effort, this NFDI initiative, a joint effort of the federal government and the state governments, which uh, typically provide funding for research and education, but by special arrangements, it's possible uh, to also join forces between the two levels. Um, if there are um, initiatives that are of national interest and uh, happy to say that uh, also the new, our new government has put uh, the NFDI as part of its agenda and part of its digitization um, measures for the next uh, decade or so. So the um, <clears throat> overall goal of uh, uh, the NFDI are uh, to uh, manage uh, scientific and research data for all areas of science. So this is not a uh, initiative just limited to uh, the humanities and the social sciences, but uh, we have NFD, uh, NFDI consortia by now in many, many disciplines also, including the life sciences, the natural sciences, and so on. Uh, the idea is to provide long-term data storage, backup, and accessibility. If you want the very backbone, the uh, technical infrastructure in the back end, but also establish a network of, uh, in the end, 30 different consortia uh, that will be distributed uh, over all areas of science. And then also to network um, the uh, research data that will be housed within the NFDI, uh, both nationally, but also internationally. And here, of course, uh, it is uh, very important for us to maintain our close collaboration with Klarin Eric, uh, Daria Eric, and other uh, international stakeholders. Now something has happened that I was afraid might happen. I can't really advance, but maybe, so it's unfortunately blocking, but maybe this is uh, the way to advance it. Okay, let's try. All right, so what's the current state of the NFDI? Well, uh, there have been two rounds of proposals already, uh, resulting in, a, in the funding of uh, 19 NFDI consortia and also of an NFDI directorate uh, that has been established at the University of Karlsruhe and uh, with the directorship uh, of uh, Professor Zurufetta, uh, Jörg Zurufetta. Uh, and this directorate is, uh, has the mission of facilitating cooperation among the consortia, uh, for example, by establishing uh, cross-cutting topics that are of uh, broad interest within the NFTI, and uh, this is off to a good start. We now have several sessions, cross-cutting topics uh, that will make sure that we are not just uh, an isolated, uh, unconnected um, <clears throat> infrastructure of uh, different centers, but uh, that we really uh, engage in close collaboration among uh, the different consortia. So these are called cross-cutting topics. And uh, we have established now four such topics. One is uh, technical infrastructure, but also um, the uh, area of training, training services for our communities, the issues of legal and ethical considerations, and also metadata. And it's probably not surprising that many of these topics um, are very familiar to Clarin. In fact, we're benefiting here also from uh, our uh, uh, long-term collaboration uh, 
with the Eric. So, oh yeah, this seems to work. Okay, so uh, as I mentioned at the beginning, um, we um, aim, or the German government is uh, aiming to have a total of 30 consortia. Uh, and so there was a, a kind of uh, crucial question right at the beginning, namely how many consortia could be or would be necessary for the humanities and related fields? Two, five, 10? Um, nobody kind of knew about this. And nobody really also knew how to arrive at an answer. In the humanities and social sciences, we initiated with generous support of the BMBF uh, a workshop series in 2018 that was uh, funded, as I said, by the BMBF, but it was jointly organized by the Union of German Academies, by uh, Klarin and Daria uh, Germany, and uh, we invited all relevant stakeholders. So there were data and infrastructure providers, uh, representatives from universities, research institutes, research libraries, and professional associations, uh, prominently also the uh, Digital Humanities Association for the German-speaking countries that uh, provided uh, generous uh, moderation of the whole process. The outcome of this totally open process were, in the end, four initiatives um, and two of them uh, we're very happy have already been funded among the 19 consortia that we have one um, is called um, nfte nfti for culture that's the uh, the circle that you see um, at the bottom of the screen uh, and they uh, are catering in particular uh, to uh, issues of architecture, art history, musicology, but also the performing arts, and Text Plus, um, which is focusing on language and text-based disciplines, and a number of, uh, so to say, uh, core disciplines like general linguistics, modern languages, but also literary studies, philosophy, classical philology, anthropology and non-European cultures and languages. There are two uh, additional initiatives that have applied for funding in the current round of proposals. Uh, one of them is NFDI for objects. Uh, this is a uh, initiative around archaeology, uh, broadly conceived, but also ancient classical uh, architecture, uh, cultural heritage studies and conservation studies. And the fourth one, but uh, not in terms of any ranking, uh, is NF NFTE for uh, memory, uh, whose core discipline are historical uh, sciences, in particular history, but also economic and social sciences and history, uh, religious studies um, and uh, historical philosophy, uh, and in particular also involving many different memory institutions uh, from the glam side. Okay, so this is our answer, uh, which we arrived at really inductively. And um, I think it was a good outcome because it became very clear that it would neither be wise uh, nor real, really realistic to combine all the initiatives in our area um, in one uh, NFDI consortium. Um, we also signed uh, a memorandum of understanding as a basis for cooperation. So a long list of authors here uh, from 2019. And this has been published on Zenodo. If you would like to take a look, uh, the link is given right here. And this continues to have a very important role for us because it kind of establishes the ground rules. And we uh, continue to meet on a regular basis to uh, also uh, now devise a strategy and uh, to um, a list of priorities for the kinds of measures that we want to see happen within the NFDI as a whole. Now, zooming in on Text Plus, so uh, we have 
a total of five applicant and co-applicant institutions. Uh, they are uh, divided, I think, in a very sensible way. There are two uh, academies, uh, German academies involved. One of them is the Berlin Brandenburgische Akademie der Wissenschaften, a long time uh, client center uh, that is uh, uh, directed now by uh, Alexander Geigen. Um, and also, and this is a newcomer compared to earlier initiatives, uh, the Nordrhein-Westfälische Akademie der Wissenschaften und Künste in uh, Düsseldorf. Uh, and here, uh, the director for uh, Text Plus is Andrea Speer, who is a philosopher and a long time pro um, a practitioner of uh, digital humanities at the University of Cologne. We have two, I think, very important uh, libraries uh, involved. Uh, one of them is the uh, Deutsche Nationalbibliothek with uh, locations in Leipzig and Frankfurt. And here, uh, the uh, responsible person is Peter Leinen, who is the head of uh, IT for uh, the DNB as the uh, acronym for the Deutsche Nationalbibliothek. Uh, we have uh, also on board, and this is uh, also a long uh, time uh, collaborator, the uh, SUB, the Staats- and Universitätsbibliothek in Göttingen, uh, which is represented by Regine Stein. And uh, they, of course, have played the leading role uh, in um, Daria DE. Uh, so there is a lot of continuity also with earlier initiatives. And then finally, uh, we have as the um, applicant institution, so where uh, we are uh, then collaborating directly with our funders, but also uh, with the uh, directorate. Um, and that's the Leibniz Institute for Deutsche Sprache in Mannheim. Uh, and uh, I have the honor to uh, represent uh, together with uh, Andreas Witt, uh, the IDS uh, in Text Plus and in the NFDI as a whole. Uh, we have additional participating institutions. Um, altogether, we have 35 uh, uh, institutions involved in Text Plus at this moment, but we aim to um, grow quite a bit and add additional uh, institutions over the course of the next five years. So uh, my prediction would be that in about five years, there will be uh, 50 member institutions uh, within the NFDI. That also shows you that um, uh, trying to uh, manage a very large consortium is one of the expectations in the NFDI. And um, it is uh, very important uh, for us uh, to then also branch out to new players, new st stakeholders. Torsten Trippel will talk about this in his presentation uh, in a few minutes. Now, we are focusing initially on uh, three data domains. Uh, which we also call thematic clusters. And they are in the area of collections. Um, and uh, these involve uh, collections both of contemporary language, historical text, and also unstructured text uh, with high volume, which, for example, is provided by our two uh, libraries, but of course also by a number of uh, collaborating <coughs> archives. Um, among collections, we by no means focus only on textual data, and this is what our PLUS in the Text PLUS uh, title of our initiative is supposed to uh, indicate, that we also, of course, focus on multimodal data and spoken data. Again, this is something that, of course, uh, we share with Klein that has the same uh, very broad um, <coughs> Uh, view of uh, collections uh, that involve language and speech. The second area is that of lexical resources. Uh, here we want to strengthen uh, the position and also the contribution from German dictionaries in a European context. And here we mean, uh, again, uh, not just contemporary uh, German, but also uh, earlier historical uh, stages of German, 
also of language variation. Uh, so different dialect uh, dictionaries are very important to us. We also want to include uh, born digital lexical resources. I'll just name two of them real quickly. One is uh, the Leipzig uh, Wortschatz collection, but also uh, Germanet and other <coughs> lexical resources of this type. And very importantly, uh, we also want lexical resources for non-Latin scripts because uh, we have uh, quite a um, contingent of partners that specialize on um, non-European and non-Latin uh, research data. And finally, editions, which has a very venerable and long-term tradition, uh, especially among academies, uh, where there are long-term projects uh, that often focus on ancient and medieval texts, but also, of course, early modern and con contemporary texts. So this is our uh, initial offering. This is also our focal area, but of course we're open uh, for further research clusters in the future as other types of research data come on board. And I want to just do a, a, a few examples here that are supposed to indicate the breadth of our mission here. Uh, and I'm giving here an example of a uh, German writer, Thomas Strittmacher, who was an early pioneer in um, providing uh, his writings, drama, for example, uh, as born digital objects. And uh, this, of course, raises quite a bit of challenge uh, because you have to, again, link materials of different kinds. You see an example here uh, on the slide. Um, and um, there are also particular challenges for um, born digital data. I mean, the initial reaction is, oh, born digital, that's great. You're already halfway there. But of course, uh, uh, Strittmacher's work uh, dates back to the earlier period uh, of, say, the Macintosh and even before. And so this issue of having to reconstruct text from old hard and software is uh, quite an issue, as is, uh, of course, preservation of the uh, the objects themselves. Uh, so we uh, very much uh, enjoy this uh, collaboration with the uh, German literature archive uh, in Marbach, which is of course well known for its many uh, holdings, including the Schiller arch archive and other uh, more historical texts, but also, as we see here, also born digital uh, resources. <clears throat> Now, the second uh, example I want to briefly mention here are the collections of historical texts uh, that are contributed by the uh, uh, Berlin Brandenburg Academy. Uh, one um, very important resource uh, for the modern period of the German language uh, is the uh, German Text Archive or the DTA. This is, uh, I think, an exemplary um, uh, collection that has been uh, standardized uh, in terms of the uh, uh, standards provided by the text encoding initiative and then elaborated further uh, for the needs of the uh, German uh, uh, text archive. Uh, there is a very large co uh, community uh, supporting uh, this archive. These are um, scholars from all over Germany that uh, uh, participate in uh, the quality uh, control of the archive as a whole. There's also very good search uh, uh, facilities already for this archive. So in a way, they're kind of a model of an archive, a text archive uh, for historical data. But this is by no means the only, uh, and I'm going to sort of switch a little bit, uh, hopefully in the right direction. Um, uh, so this is the German text archive and I already uh, talked about it. It's uh, standard conformant and uh, in very good shape as far as uh, trying to make the data fair and also adhere to the care principles. And this is uh, what uh, we wanted to uh, uh, that uh, we wanted to indicate by this 
uh, by this diagram here. So it's by no means the case that all of our um, holdings are already uh, uh, maintaining all the fair principles, but this is of course one of the goals that we have in text plus. So uh, the second, just by comparison, uh, archive that we find at the BBAB is a uh, what's called a patristic text archive. This is a uh, platform, again, collaborative platform for uh, antique uh, Christian texts. So basically uh, uh, of the uh, first centuries uh, after Christ. They are open access in that regard. They already adhere to uh, fair principles to some extent. They're also uh, already standardized, but they lack still compared to the DTA, a lot of the analysis tools. And here uh, we will have to um, uh, bolster the uh, services, uh, for example, for uh, doing uh, search and also rendering of uh, the archive. And then the biggest challenge uh, right now is a very important and uh, much written about uh, digital archive from the north northwest uh, part of China. It was just uh, discovered uh, in the 20th century, and it contains many uh, textual fragments in non-Western writing systems, and uh, also uh, in more than 20 different languages. Right. So this is a uh, international initiative cooperation between China, Great Britain, Japan, and Russia uh, to really curate these uh, resources. And um, as you can see, there's a lot of work still to be done and this will be quite a challenge. So uh, Christoph Markschies, who is mentioned here, uh, is uh, the um, director of the BBAV and uh, he will be uh, uh, involved in uh, uh, onboarding these in Text Plus. Um, so I uh, want to uh, say just a few words about the kinds of uh, data management uh, activities that we will envisage. As I said before, we want to make our data fair, uh, um, really uh, comply to the fair and care principles. And the entire work that we will be doing in Text Plus will be guided to making our research data interoperable. And that is also the goal of our funding. So we will not uh, fund the further expansion of each individual resource, but the funding from the federal government is uh, geared and reserved for uh, making uh, these very different um, uh, types of data interoperable and uh, making them integrated in a national research data infrastructure. You see again our uh, three data uh, domains, which we didn't pick sort of at random, but we see that uh, these different areas, collections, lexical resources and editions are really key uh, areas of humanities research, and uh, they also are strongly interconnected, right? So lexical resources uh, typically are now uh, in modern lexicography obtained, harvested by taking uh, prototypical examples from collections and editions. And in the other direction, uh, we need to make sure that um, collections and editions are actually uh, then uh, connected with the appropriate uh, lexical resources, for example, for uh, semantic interpretation. So we have a total of eight uh, data centers, and uh, we call them thematic clusters, that will provide data services and will also be our focal areas for integration of additional research, uh, research data. We have a set of community activities uh, that also include onboarding of additional centers, and Dawson will talk about this in a minute. And of course, we also offer software services, uh, for example, uh, Switchboard and Weblicht, uh, to mention only two of them, of course, there's a much wider uh, 
uh, set of offerings. Okay, very quickly, our search and interoperability solutions. Uh, they include uh, federated data and metadata uh, search and infrastructure. And of course, here we build directly on the uh, kinds of activities uh, that uh, Clarin Eric, but also Daria Eric, uh, have been uh, involved in for many years to, for example, interconnect our three data domains. But we also want to uh, enlarge uh, interoperability by using uh, what we call, uh, or what is called the Generalisierte Normdatei, the Generalized Norm Data Agency, which is coordinated uh, by the, among others, by the uh, uh, DNB, by the National Library in Frankfurt. And here the idea is to uh, annotate our resources with uh, the names of persons, institution, places, and so on, named entities, if you want, and then connect uh, these um, uh, different entities to other holdings. For example, with the other uh, initiative in the NFDI, NFDI for Culture, but also with the metadata of Europeana or Open Air, and at some point, hopefully also EOSC, and uh, do all of this on the basis of these uh, international authority files that the GND, the German uh, uh, holding, is a member of. Okay, and uh, that way we can directly then also uh, link different um, types of texts and, and resources, for example, Wikipedia entries, to name just one, uh, with the uh, source texts, for example, in collections. So this is something that we want to uh, engage in from the very beginning in Text Plus, and we've already uh, established the uh, first working groups in that area. And finally, community involvement will continue to be strong. That was always uh, a uh, strong uh, focus in, for example, uh, uh, Daria DE and, and Clarin DE. And we will continue to do this, building on the networks that we have already established, but also uh, sometimes borrowing shamelessly from uh, the Research Data Alliance with their nice birds of a feather uh, working groups to try to initiate uh, new uh, topics uh, and also new methods uh, and uh, looking at the infrastructural implications of establishing uh, such uh, new ideas and uh, new resources within a technical infrastructure. We will also engage in a technology and methodology watch, and this we hope and uh, want to uh, realize uh, new tools and software services for. And then finally, there will be a uh, very strong uh, component of training and education measures. And with that, um, I uh, would like to stop here and